and gentlemen. You're watching Geek Gaston. I'm Phil Geeks. And today we've got in the virtual studio Davion Bussey. Corey Davis. And we have a special guest. Uh, Arsene or Zoom in. Alright, I heard a heard a little echo there. What's happening there? What, what's happening there? Uh, I, I, I caught you. Not me. I caught you. I caught you. <laughs> you were looking, checking out the live stream. I caught you on there. I caught you there. All right. So you're watching Geek Cast or Everything Sci-Fi Fantasy, and today we've got a special guest, Ars and Arson. Arson. Um, you're like oh. awesome. That rhymes with awesome. That's kind of great. You're a visual artist. Is that is that fair to say? That is that is fair. Yeah. Oh. So I found I found this guy on the. Uh, internets on the social media and uh stalked them and said hey you gotta join us for the show so um tell people a little bit about what we do and then we'll, we'll jump into different topics so what do you do arson oh so i do uh pre-visualization so that's a big word but what it really is it's kind of we make a ps2 version of the movie before they film the movie so we work together with storyboards where we will be the first people that dissect the script and actually turn the words into images and sequences that are edited together. Because quite often, you know, words on a page don't read the same thing visually, so it's really making that connection. So that's that's mainly what the job is. That's awesome. Actually, mm -hmm. that, that, that really helps you to be a part of the show, actually, because um, there's a lot, of, a lot of scripts we think suck. You know what I'm saying? So oh. what happens when things are like... Oh this makes no sense like how do you make it how do you sell it basically because you're like selling it right yes that's true shoveling garbage sometimes is the name of the game uh yeah i mean the thing is there's like there's several layers of storytelling so there's there's the big layer of storytelling which is like the hero's journey the you know going around the thing uh you know it, getting character development, all this stuff, that's the big, that's the big structure. And the people responsible for that would be, you know, the screenwriter and the director is kind of responsible for everything, making sure everything is flowing correctly. And then there's a bunch of other levels of storytelling that all sit many layers up. The problem is, with a lot of films, is that the ground they have is so terrible <laughs> that no matter the artistry that goes on top of it, it will all still kind of crumble. But my role is I have to assume, or I have to kind of, I have to give the benefit of the doubt that the foundation is going to stay because I'm not responsible for building, right? Like if someone hired you to build the second floor of a building, you're going to assume the first floor can hold a certain amount of weight just because that's what you, ha I mean, in this case you might die. So, but for me, I mean, the movie's terrible. I still get paid. It doesn't really affect me. I would like the movie to be good, but, and that's where you go, you know, scene development in terms of an actual, like storytelling in terms of an actual scene, knowing where a character is running. What do they take? What do they do? So often we see just, the stuff that works really well, that you don't realize how difficult it is to actually make that happen. And you know, you could just take any scene and look at all the shots. There were conversations about every single one of those shots, going back and forth, back so and wait a minute, forth. Wait a minute. So let, let, let me let me just throw this. So all right, here's yeah. a story. Yes. It's called Jack and Jill. Okay, boy meets girl. Boy doesn't girl, girl doesn't like boy. Boy likes girl. Um, there's a villain. They get together. The end. Now, what do you do? That's, uh, that's the script. Well, and what do you do with that? Well, the script is going to be more detailed. The script is going to have things like Jack is holding Jill's hand as they run up a hill being chased by uh, monsters. It might be that. And that itself is also very simple. It could be more... It's better usually for the script, say, when it's more detailed, because that means the writer had more of a vision in their head than very kind of generic. Um, so my dog is growling here. Uh, but in terms of, so say the, they're running away from monsters, right? Well, now you can film it a bunch of different ways. So do we, are we afraid all the time? Like if we're constantly in fear, 
of the monsters. We're going to get them. We've got to get them. We've got to build up the fear. We might not even show the monsters. We just show maybe their shadows and we're close to the characters, you know, like really shaky cam. Or are we doing it more wide and seeing every, you know, because the, there is storytelling in that. And that, that's one of the many, many, many layers. And ideally, if you, if you do it well, no one can really notice. Because you shouldn't really pay attention to the camera and to the edit while you're watching a movie. If you're doing it well, it just, it's you know, so it kind of, kind of trickles through. Wow. I don't know if that... That's amazing. So you save people millions of dollars. That's your job, basically, to, like, try all the shots before they try all the shots. So before the actors are there. Because, like, at independent, a lot of the independent, like... Um, filmmakers they just kind of like this is what we're doing today they might have a few storyboards and they do it but you actually go through all the possible ways to do something and they could look at it and they say oh this is the best way to do it do i have that correct yeah i mean normally it's not that i mean there are many versions that get made but there usually is a point right so there is something the director will normally be the person that has that's the interesting thing is the director doesn't actually do anything physically. Like they're not, you know, they're not holding the camera. They're not an animator there. So then the question is like, what are they doing? And they ideally have, they have the emotion. Like essentially you should be able to tell me at every part of your script, how should the audience feel? Cause the art, the name of the game here is manipulation. We're manipulating the audience. You have a shot that's like slowly pushing in on a character you have a different feeling towards that character than one that's quickly moving away. You know, then it's like they're kind of getting further away. So it's this subtle language, but it is, it's, I, I mean, these are almost like propaganda-esque techniques of getting through to you what you should be thinking. And I don't know what exactly is right for the scene because I can make it cool where we're with Jack and Jill while they're sprinting the whole time and we're just with them or I could make it where you really feel how close the monsters are coming and all this other stuff and they both could be cool the question is what is the vision like like what should the audience be feeling at this time and that's what the director's job is now and, do they ever take any of your 3d and say this is so awesome why don't we just put this in the film uh no because it's well normally it's not like maybe my work that you've seen on Instagram, it doesn't, it looks much worse than that. What we're doing is very, very rough. It's not even lit. Um, if you go on my website, you can see I have like a reel of uh, kind of previous work and it looks kind of like a, like a maybe a PS3 game at this point. Uh, the new technologies are, made, are really developing in this field right now, so it's not going to be for long. But that whole goal is we don't care what it looks like. We're, we're just trying to see the scene. Like, does that make sense? We're like, sometimes it's positioning. Well, he was there, but now he has to go get her. So almost Wait, like no, she's on this building. Do you ever do like what? stick, like almost like stick figures? Like it's really rough. Like it, like it literally is almost like storyboarding for real. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like with storyboards, I was surprised when I first started working how rough they really were. Because uh, previously, I'd really wanted to be a storyboard artist, and I felt like, you know, like I, you know, I know how to draw, but I felt like I'm not on that level of doing these pictures. And then I was looking at the stuff I was getting. Sometimes we're working from scripts, sometimes from storyboards, and it's like, whoa, well, this, <laughs> these are super rough, but they, you totally understand what's happening. You get the motion, the, you know, you get all these little things they don't have to look amazing but as long as you get the idea and that's kind of the point of previs as well is we're just so, getting the idea so instead of a paper's rough draft this is the film's rough draft where it doesn't matter the final outcome is just putting all the pieces together yes yeah it's like a blueprint in that way and often after we finish doing a pre if it gets approved and they're like cool this is great we like it we'll do another version where we uh, oh. essentially take what dimensions they can film in and try to tell them how to film it, essentially. Uh, like for Beauty and the Beast, there's a part where Belle is being chased by a bunch of wolves, and there's, uh, you know, they're, she's, they're chasing her, but their set was only so big. So after we did our first previs, which is, you know, we have an infinite set, we can do whatever we want, we found out where they can film, 
And then we just essentially had them running up and down the same room several times. Uh, so you can't notice which direction. So it's, you know, so there's that aspect as well, uh, which is like, also you want a blueprint. So when you get on set, you know exactly what, there's no mysteries, like camera needs to be exactly here. Sometimes we'll, there'll be measurements. It's like five feet off the ground. It's like five feet from the actor. Cause we'll use the correct accurate film, like back information. So ideally the goal is, so it just makes pr things faster. You know? Like when they're, we get on set. So like Davion, when you do um, a lot of indie projects, um, do they, they use storyboards or you kind of just go for it? There's moments where we don't do storyboards. We just go by what the directors tells us what to do and tell us how to act it. We would love to have a storyboard person so we could get a clear vision of what's going on before we actually get on set as actors and producers, you know, because there's moments where the director at times don't make sense. But if you have that storyboard, it basically could basically, I mean, basically be a clear idea or that plat like a marking or something so you get a clear understanding of what your actor's supposed to do from A, B, and C compared to the director telling you, okay, this is A, cut, this is B, cut, and this is C. Yeah, because Arson, I don't know if you ever watch any of our shows, but um, I was really inspired by Nas, um, the old Nas X, and, you know, he has those blood shoes. I don't know if you heard about those. I have, I've heard about these yeah. shoes. So we have um, some called doo shoes. <laughs> doo shoes. What's happening here? Wow. Maybe it's in your end, our end, we're good. <laughs> wow, that was amazing. Um, we're still every, up. Everything froze. You see what happens when you mention the evil guy down under? You see what happens? You see, you see, see what happens, Corey? I, you. I tried to warn you. You. you didn't listen. I didn't listen. Well, this well, doo doo shoes are gonna save the world and everyone's soul. Obviously, this is a sign. We have gotta do. So I was thinking about, you know, we're gonna shoot something, and I'm gonna do a storyboard. So, what what's your advice on putting together a storyboard for doo doo shoes? And by the way, doo doo shoes are gonna be sneakers, but there's doo doo in the soles of them. Interesting. Yeah. So you're, gonna, you're trying to make a, like a commercial for these doo doo shoes? I think we should. I think we should. I think that's by the end of the season, we should have a. Look, look at Davey. I'm like, oh, oh, trying to hide from there. No, I think we should do it. So, what's your advice on making like a storyboard? Like, how do we even start this thing? Well, with a shoe, it's good because it's, it's pretty standard. You know, like. You're gonna to wanna to look at some references of other shoe commercials. That'll be a good place to start. You know, look at their stuff that have been made. And for what are you really trying to highlight with these doo-doo shoes? See, see, I, I like I like see I like the way he thinks, man. He's a smelling aspect. He's a genius. The yeah, like um hmm. I I guess the <laughs> Can I say it? Can I say it? Can the I say it? Of the can, shoes. I, <laughs> can I say it? Can yeah. I say it? Sure, sure. So, pretty much the image is these shoes are the ish. As I play the cow sound effect. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so confused now. What? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, pretty much these shoes, they have a smell. Yeah, they smell so bad. No, no, no. They're not gonna smell. Stop it. Stop it. Don't ask him. Ask me. Ask me. Yeah. So, they're they're sexy. They're um, we want them to sell more than the other shows, which we will not mention because the whole system might crash. <laughs> it's terrible what's going on there. But um, yeah. So like story story building, we want to highlight. So I figured a close up of me, right? And then um, Davion lifting up his nose, like, oh, that no, this is funky. And then Corey shaking his head, oh my goodness, I can't believe he actually made these things. And boom, have like a pretty girl next to me and uh, do the shoes. I think that's, you know, that, that, that's, that's one approach, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right, but well, yeah I mean, well, you're well, trying to highlight the fact that of, of the smell is, you know, you can just have like a nice, uh, imagine like, you know, like a nice street, you know, and someone's like walking, like, you know, a real nice swagger and you got just the shoes. Mm -hmm. And you got some shots on the side of the people that are like just, you know, he's walking in the middle of the street. So all the people on the side 
and it's like these beautiful people dressed up and they all kind of like do this like like what's this type of smell and you kind of keep going back to the shoes and then just cuts to you talking about dude's shoes you know i think once a month we should invite another expert we should get someone that does like wardrobe guys i think we should do this <laughs> Corey, keep shaking your head like this is not going to happen I can't believe we're going this far with it. <laughs> now it's going to be a thing. <laughs> it's going to be a thing, man. Fans everywhere. <laughs> what the dude is shit? Help know. us. Anyway, Help us. So, so Arson, let me ask you this. Like, uh, how'd you get into all this? Like, do you just one day and, like, my brain is huge. I'm so smart. Let me just start this graphic stuff. Like, how'd you do it? Well, I... I once was had shoes and I stepped in some doo doo stuff and then from that point I felt that I had to pursue these shoes with my you know that was my life mission and that didn't work out so then I went into animation but now I'm finally back to where I belong I think. Um, wait sorry what was the question <laughs> I like this guy I like this guy I like this guy um, now how'd you get into all this um well, let's talk about, I mean, that's what you do for work. Oh, but like, playing video games, I just uh, was like, I like this. This is cool. I don't like going to school. I like playing video games. I want to do something like this. My man. My man. My hero. That's Question. Awesome. Question. What system do you prefer? Oh, no. Xbox or PS? Uh, I think... From just like a loyalty perspective, you know, I'm gonna have to go with PlayStation. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. That's from yes. like because like you know, for me the PlayStation was my first console I got. Uh, so I you know they, I have I have a loyalty to those people. I mean like Xbox, you know, when Xbox came out, I already knew about the world, you know. When PlayStation came out, I was still ignorant of the reality of the world. It's a big difference to me. You know what's crazy? I still am. Yeah, it's pretty I good. I still am. Oh, so, so when it comes to, like, um... Uh, by the way, sidebar, like, the whole gaming thing, um... So you could, you could, you could play virtual games, like, with other people? Like, you don't have to be in the same place, right? You can, uh... If you, like, we all can play a game together on, on the internet? Yes, that that's where we're at with technology. I believe, Mike, yeah. I, believe, I believe it's possible. Yeah. Wow. See, I'm ignorant of the world. I don't know what's going on here. That's great. It's so, okay. So if I said, you know what, I'm so... I want to be your apprentice. I want to learn how to make... I want to make Peter Pan. Only difference is I want to make Captain Cook hook to Mike kill him. So I want to do that, right? Like, how, 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 do, I, how do I, like... How do I do that? Like an animation, just like, bleh, like you know. Well, you would have to be someone else's apprentice because I myself have not made full movies by myself. So, <laughs> I that's a lot, uh, a lot of layers above me. Um, but you know, if someone wants to get into animation, I think, I mean, the internet is the greatest resource in the world, and I think it's easy to kind of to take it for granted, but. You know, it used to, like, when I first, it wasn't even that long ago, but when I first went to school, I was learning a software that was not used very well. It's called Lightwave. I was like, I transferred schools at one point to one that taught me the right stuff. But, and, you know, we had to, like, read this giant textbook to get any information. And it's horrible. It's, you know, you can't hit Control F to find a keyword you need. So you're like, oh, I need this, like, five minute thing. It's like two hours looking through a book. Uh, so just generally, I think on like learning how to use like Unreal Engine, that's the big new thing that's blown up, you know. So if you ha you know Unreal Engine, it's gonna help you if you, you know if you want to get a job. Not a lot of people, you know, not a lot of people in my field don't know this new tool. So it introduces a chaos, you know. So there's like a kind of a chaos in the industry of. We have this new tool that's amazing, and you have all these like really talented people that know you know know what they're doing, but they haven't bridged the gap because it's so new. And you know, to quote my uh, you know favorite character of Chaos is a Ladder, <laughs> you can totally 
use that to your advantage if you're trying to get in because now it's an equalizer. You don't know Unreal, but guess what? Neither does the person who's been doing this for 10 years. Boom, now you can so, try, you know. Are people using Maya and still stuff too? Yeah, so Maya is still kind of the main program. That's the main one. And I would, it's going to be the big one for a long time. It, you know, th they work together, a lot of them. So it's not like you pick one and the other one you don't use. Like you use Maya and Unreal together. But Unreal is kind of that new uh, big piece of software. And Epic Games, who make it, they have a lot of resources online. They have a whole learning hub of how to learn it and how to get into it and have a lot of, uh, what I really love about them is they have full projects that already work, like a whole amazing project that you can just download and open and look inside of, oh, which wow. I find it be a much easier way to, for me to learn stuff than learning stuff from nothing. Right. You know, it's like fixing a car, right? Like you open it, like you look at the engine, you move, but try to combine an engine from parts, it's going to take you so much longer. Oh, that's that's so they're Corey right cool. there. He's Mr. Car Man. You just made his day there right at the alley yeah 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 man, that's really cool man yep 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 oh man i want to i want to do something i want to create something uh, uh. Doo -doo you're shoes. gonna create doo -doo. i knew it <laughs> you want these doo, doo shoes man it's happening it's happening so guys are there any films that you wish arson actually worked on because there's a bunch of stuff that we've talked about in the last year that were like Cool visuals, nice camera shots, stories not hanging. Anything you guys can think of? Every movie I've ever worked on. <laughs> <laughs> My average Rotten Tomato score is 38. Ooh, nice. Also, dude, I was responsible for the two... So. The chance of me ever working on my top five favorite film of all time is pretty much zero, right? First of all, a movie has to come out that will make it in my top five. The chance of that is already low. The chance of it coming out and also me working on it is pretty much nothing. But I've worked on two of the top five worst films I've ever seen, which, you know, I take that as, you know, that's something. Hey, so are you allowed to say what they are? Yeah, and two th I, I don't give a shit, because I, I, I couldn't care less about, like, I... I mean, these movies were so terrible that everyone must know who's responsible. Uh, so, in 2015, Fantastic Four and Pixels came out. Mm-hmm. Oh! Yeah! Pixels! That was a real movie that humans made. And they, they, they oh, no. a lot of energy. It wasn't that bad. What? It wasn't! What? <laughs> Pixels? Yeah. Pixels is the most insane thing I've ever seen. It is insane, but it was enjoyable. This yeah. Peter Dinklage, yeah. The whole logic is Peter Dinklage cheated in a, a game as a little kid, so then he, in real life he does it with a cheat code in a car. Like, <laughs> what? It's so crazy. I I couldn't I couldn't believe it. The, but that's the, but movie. you know who who you was dealing with. You dealing with. The comedic Adam Sandler. Can I say his name, right? It looks like you did a good job, yeah. <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, you know, it wasn't that bad. I'll say that much. It wasn't meant, I think, I think it was meant for, like, the more for the adolescents, more than... I, I mean, maybe, like, I think, in like... All right, yeah, to, to give it something, mm -hmm. I would say I think, like, uh, adolescents who don't speak English will probably like it. <laughs> or, like, the, as long as, uh, in, in, essentially, as long as you don't know what's... Ha also, if it's really hot outside and you are, and, like, you just need to get into, like, a cold place, you can go into a movie theater. I'm sorry, I just hate Pixels so much. I can't I can't take say anything good about Dude, I worked on one shot in that movie for two months, after which I left. I just essentially quit my job. And I just went to like Asia for like a month and I didn't have a computer or a screen or anything. And then when I came back, I got re booked back at the studio. I was at an airport. So the next day and I was, and it was still the same shot. They still had no time. <laughs> it's like all the bugs coming through. Like, what if they come through this? What if they come through this? What about that way? What about this way? What about that way? And it's just like, there's no, yeah. I mean, a lot of this is 
Yes. Yeah, so, and, I'm, I'm, and maybe I'm being too honest here. No, you, I feel comfortable in my in my. You know. No, but it's good. Like we want honesty. You know, that's how we are. We want honesty. So I don't we intend want... to ever work in film again, so I really don't even care. All right. So what was the other movie you said? Oh, Fantastic Four. That was the one where which well, who the the worst one. Uh, where I Michael mean, B. It was Jordan. the one that was like really famously bad. I think it got like a two percent in Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, that was the one where Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, yeah. A lot of that movie got cut and recut, and all oh, like that whole last. Act, I worked on the last act. It's like in the movie. It's like ten minutes or something. Like the last thing. It was like it was like forty minutes long. It was like part of. It was like a huge part of the movie. What was happening? Like, but they, you know. I mean, that's like a Frankenstein of a movie. Mm-hmm. So my question is, what genre of movie do you seem to enjoy? Because from hearing about it, fantasy is not your thing. <laughs> uh, I, I like, I love fantasy. Uh, I really, I, yeah, I really like fantasy. Um, I mean, I just like good movie. Like, I don't know. I just think any genre can be a great movie. Like, anything has such a great... Like the, you can tell, st- I think the problem is, honestly, there's not a lot of good storytellers that are currently film directors. That's just the reality, and I think it's because the process uh, to become a film director weeds a lot of people out because the process is, you know, it's like it's it's like selection bias, right? You know, if if like you're gonna hire people at a place and it's like. You're gonna give a thousand dollars, so everyone's gonna like run and chase to get to your office to get the job. Then you're gonna accidentally select for people who are the fastest. You know, it's like that type of thing. So like the mechanisms at play to become a director, I think, and in the studio system, all that stuff, isn't in line with storytelling. I mean, you see a lot of good storytelling, I think, has migrated over to TV. You know, like with Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones, you know, all this kind of... That's where a lot of the bigger stuff went. And then film has essentially been hollowed out from the inside where there is no mid-budget movie anymore. Because the studios realized if they make one movie for 10 million... You know, if they make 10 movies for $10 million, the possible gains of that, while they could be good are dwarfed by making one movie for a hundred million dollars and fucking throwing that shit every possible theater you can imagine. It makes you so much more money. So then you do that. So there are, there's these like crazy art house indie indie movies. And then there's these giant tent poles and the whole middle has just been, you know, disappeared. And I think the middle is, that's where the good stuff is. Like normally, you know, that's where you have the stuff that is balancing Maybe some of the crazy, wacky indie movies that are too art house. That's like it's like hard for like my mom to like get this movie, even though I like it, because I, you know, it's too weird. Oh no! no hold on a second. It. What we're gonna do is. Um... Oh yeah, sorry. I just want to. No, 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 no. We're, we're gonna keep <laughs> on going. So everyone on Twitch, just, just continue and being live. Don't worry about it. Just, just hold on. But for those, um, we do put this on cable. So I'm gonna stop this in about a minute. And we're just gonna keep going. So I'm probably just going to do a quick uh, interview. Uh, we're hanging with Arson. And uh, part one, part two. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Well, some sort of title. Uh, visual artist. Uh, the uh, prince of uh, knowledge that nobody knows. Information. <laughs> but you can't be the king. I'm the king there. So. All right. So we'll do that really quick there. All right. So uh, in exactly a couple of seconds there. And again, if you're watching this live on Twitch, just, just hold on. We're just doing the cable stuff here. Right. And, and, I'm, uh, and I'm it'll be two parts on YouTube. You. Yeah. And I'm looking down at you. That was a moment. You guys don't even know what happened right there. Thank you, David. I know that was like a moment right there. <laughs> 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 All right. I so saw. if you're seeing this in cable, watch this next week. All right. Enjoy. And uh, you're watching Geekcaster. All right.